Well, thank you, Eli. Thank you all for being here, and, and uh, I've been given this opportunity to uh, speak to you all this morning, and uh, I pray that what I have to say and, and we study will be edifying and encouraging to all of you. This morning we're going to be looking at a phrase in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Hopefully I can... PowerPoint working right here. There we go. We're going to look at this phrase, the <clears throat> worthy of the calling. In, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which, with, with which you have been called. So today I want us to examine this phrase. Uh, we're told to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which we have been called. So we need to first break this out. Break out what are we going to examine here. This is, uh, we'll examine three parts and then uh, we'll close with the lesson. First of all, what is the calling? What is walking in a manner worthy of the call? And what does Jesus teach us about walking in that manner? Just realize the PowerPoint's going to show everything, so don't read ahead of me. <laughs> Nobody look. First, we have to examine what is the call. The calling that we're talking about here is actually referenced back in Ephesians 1, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us to adoption as, the, as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. The call in chapter 4 and verse 1 that's described here, people are called to praise the glory of God. God is being the Redeemer of mankind through Jesus Christ. The ultimate purpose of the call is not just redemption as such, but the praise of God's glorious name through redemption. We are to walk in a manner worthy of praising God's glory by being redeemed. And we walk in a manner that honors our redemption. We are called to praise God's glory. This is the purpose of life. As, as I said, we must live our lives with that purpose. Praising God is truly, as the world accuses him, is not about stroking God's ego as some sort of narcissist that wants to be worshipped. Rather, praising God and God's glory is worshipping him because he has redeemed us. Because he has redeemed us, he is worthy of worship. Because he has redeemed us, he has restored the creation back to its original state of perfection as he created the world and all creation. In order for us to truly understand the calling, look at Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 18. <clears throat> For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption 
into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. Not only this, but we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. So Romans 8, they're uh, 18 and following. We see here that the creation groans to be restored to its former state of perfection, as again, as God created it. This restoration truly is only made complete in Jesus Christ. Redemption is, therefore, it's not only just a, a desire, our desire to be restored. Truly, it's our responsibility. It is our responsibility to give back to God what we have taken from him by separating ourselves from our creator by the commission of sin. And by being called back, we are called back through Jesus Christ. We are called to that great restoration that can only be done through Jesus Christ. And for that, for God's grand scheme of redemption, bring mankind back to him from sin, that is what we are called to do. By coming back to God, we glorify and praise his name. That is what Paul is telling us that we are called to do. But what does it mean to walk in a manner worthy of the calling? It does not mean to walk sinlessly. It does not mean that you must walk in some such manner to be counted worthy to God. But nor does it mean that you must walk in a manner to be just be called of God. So what is our walk that we're talking about here? We are to live as a redeemed person in Jesus Christ. By living as a redeemed person, you are praising the glory of God. And it was God's plan from before time began that you should come back to him and have a singularly unhindered relationship with him. Your very redemption is what praises God's glory. And we can walk confidently in that redemption. We can walk in a manner worthy of our calling by walking with the confidence that comes from being redeemed by Jesus Christ. God knows that we'll commit sin and wander away from him. God knows none of us can live up to a high standard of sinlessness and perfection. He has taken care of all that at the cross. God knows that none of us can uh, somehow achieve a worth thereby entering his kingdom. If you could be sinless, then there would have been no purpose in Jesus Christ coming to earth to die for our sins. So we can walk confidently in the manner in which we are called because I am worthy because God says I'm worthy. I am called because God has called me. He has done that work already. I do not have to somehow regain my former state uh, of being sinless. I, my job is to walk, and my job is to do that by being redeemed in Christ Jesus and living my life in such a way that I reflect what he has done for me. Of course, Jesus is, is our example in all things. Uh, Jesus is our example. I want to look at what he has done, really, uh, specifically at his temptation from Satan in Luke 4. Uh, in this is, of course, one place that Jesus shows us the uh, manner in which we can walk worthy of our calling. During his encounter with the devil here in Luke 4, when we read the temptation of Jesus in the desert, we often talk about the, what, how the devil is working on us, seeing his methods of temptation, 
understanding what Jesus said in the desert, and all of that rightly so. But I really want this sermon to go beyond that and look at what Jesus is doing here so we can acquire a deeper understanding of how we can walk in a manner worthy of our calling. Jesus had, of course, his own special calling to come to earth to be the Savior of the world. We have our special calling to walk in a manner worthy, worthy of the calling to praise God. As we see in Luke 4, and I will just summarize, Satan tempts Jesus, as he does all of us, with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus rightly quotes Scripture to Satan, and uh, he, knows, he knows Scripture, as, as of course he does, but he also understands Scripture. Jesus understands God. Jesus understands his word. And so can we. And we would do well, of course, to spend time in God's word. Jesus understands what we go through when we are tempted as well. But let's look at Jesus' understanding. Not just that he's quoting, but what he's actually doing. The various temptations. Jesus says, I don't turn stones into bread because I don't live on bread alone. I don't worship you, Satan, in exchange for all the kingdoms of the earth. I only worship God alone. And I don't test God by jumping off the pinnacle of the temple. God only tests me. God tests us, and we can see that Jesus was called for that special purpose. come to earth to die for the sins of the world, and in so doing, he perfectly walked in the manner of that calling. But what Jesus did was action. It was motion. It was movement. He leaned into the work of salvation, and this is where we must uh, really get to a, an understanding of what it means for us in Ephesians 4.1. Walking worthy of the calling we are to walk. It is an action, a verb. Jesus was on a mission. He was building his church. He was walking with God. He was teaching his disciples. He was serving others. It was not just uh, quoting scripture that led Jesus to his victory over Satan and the temptations that he presented. It was his walk in a manner worthy of the calling that put Jesus over the top, where he was victorious over Satan. Jesus had a specific purpose to fulfill, as we do our own purpose. We have that special calling as Christians today. But what I want us to see is that Jesus was moving, he was working, he was pursuing, he was fulfilling, and he completed his work. So, the question is, how are you walking? How are you walking, and in what manner are you walking? What are you becoming? What are you striving to do? How are you seeking to serve God and others here to be an influence in God's church, to be an influence to those who are not Christians? You're called to praise God's glory, as we've already concluded, but by being redeemed through Jesus Christ. How we live our lives honors that call. So, I want to challenge you to ask yourself in what manner you are living your life, in what manner are you walking, because you have been called. We must answer that call. As, uh, as we read at the beginning, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, it shows us there a progression of the various uh, virtues and attributes of becoming a Christian, all the way from faith down to love. It calls us there to moral excellence. Yes, that is a daunting thing for us to consider. We are called to moral excellence, not moral mediocrity. We must move, act, 
walk, work, grow, plan, think, speak. We must do these things as Jesus did. That we are growing is the attitude I believe Jesus is teaching us at his temptation in the desert. When we are standing still in our spiritual growth, we are easy targets for the devil. You may be able to repel him for a little while, uh, but if you're not building, growing, planning, thinking, pursuing, and excelling in your spiritual life, then you are an easy target for Satan. If you see yourself as just a dad in a family, just a wife, just an employee at the company, just a Christian sitting in a pew, then you can be an easy target for Satan. We must be moving. We must be walking. He will approach you and offer you alternative pathways to try out. If you are just holding your ground, standing there, he will approach you. As you think about your walk being in a manner worthy of your calling, you must critique what your life is really focused on. Again, where is it you're going? What is it that you're doing? Are we focused on simply being a Christian? It is important to be a Christian. Yes, of course. But more than that, again, more deeply, to go beyond that, it's not just about holding your ground in your fight against Satan, uh, knowing that you shouldn't make wrong decisions. Of course, that's true, but are you focused on becoming a stronger Christian? Your walk being on the pathway of progress toward a spiritual maturity. Ephesians 4.13 tells us, until we all attain the unity of the, of the peace and of the mature man, that we must walk toward maturity. Philippians 1 and verse 6 tells us, He who began a good work in you, I am confident, will complete it at that final day. By walking on the path of righteousness, we are honoring God, we are honoring our calling, we are praising God's name, precisely because we have been redeemed. We have a singular goal and we are moving toward it. Jesus showed us how to do that. He had a purpose, he was walking on a path, and he maintained his momentum. Some of you know that I uh, am a rower and uh, downtown, and I use an app uh, that tracks all of this that I, when I row, and it tracks the distance and the various other data points. And um, it, it gives me, at the end of the year, it gives me how, how cumulatively how far I've gone and how many kilometers and so forth. And when I see that, I think, you know, I, I want to keep that up. I want to keep going with that. It gives me a sense of momentum. I don't want to uh, take a month off or something like that. It, it's uh, an encouragement in a way to uh, continue going. That is what I think as Christians we need to see. We need to see the momentum. We need to see and have checkpoints in our spiritual life. We need to see and have a strategy for building righteousness in my life and exhibiting that as I live my life. To be not only a strong and faithful Christian, but to be an example to those around me. So as you walk in a manner worthy of your calling, maintaining that momentum, when we talk about Satan and temptation, if we're walking and not standing still and just being, we are becoming a stronger Christian. When we are becoming, we are a moving target. We are walking on a path in a manner worthy of our calling. When you become a target, a moving target, you make Satan's job harder. He has to catch up with you. And when he does offer you a temptation, it's no longer just that you would be making a bad decision and I shouldn't make wrong decisions. It's that you would be sabotaging your progress, your work and your mission. So walking in a manner worthy of, our, of your calling is 
about maintaining momentum. It is about living with purpose. Finally, in, in closing, it is so vital that you must develop a focus on walking in that manner. We must truly rise above simply just knowing Scripture. We must know more than just making wrong decisions. We must be focused on becoming a Christian each day, becoming a stronger Christian each day. We must do the work of becoming someone. And we do that by motion, by action, by movement, by walking in a manner worthy of that calling. Because again, the purpose of this life is, and always was, to praise the glory of God. We can do that now because Jesus Christ has bridged that gap between us in sin and our holy God. Proverbs 16.27 tells us that idle hands are the devil's workshop. So if we are not growing, pursuing, building, serving, and walking in our spiritual lives, then we are standing with idle hands. Don't stand in neutral. The devil will be nearby to put your hands to use. Keep moving. Keep walking. So we offer an invitation this morning. You are being called to be redeemed back to God. And that can only be done through Jesus Christ, to be restored to the peace, the joy, and the righteousness that he offers you and that this world can never provide for you. You're being called to walk in a manner worthy of that calling. So we offer the invitation this morning to any who want to begin that relationship with God, to be baptized, to confess his name, and we want to encourage each one here that if there is something in your life that you wish to ask the prayers of this congregation, we are more than willing to pray for you, to encourage you, and to serve you as best we can. Walk in that manner, knowing that God has defined who you are. God has saved you. You can walk in a manner that praises Him. And we are all called to do that. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to come forward now as we stand.